Hey, welcome back, folks. Two Minute Tuesday. New thing for me. I'm not going to stick to two minutes, obviously, but I'm trying to imply that it might be a slightly shorter video. I want to answer a question that I get asked a lot, right? Like, really a lot. Like a lot of other climbing and mountaineering instructor type people, I teach clients to clip their belay plate into the rope loop, right? And people ask why, and I'd like to answer why. These are just my opinions, we'll rattle through them, okay? I'm gonna clip in to uh, build a belay. You'll have seen me doing this in loads of other videos. If you haven't seen me doing it in loads of other videos, why not watch them after this one? I'm gonna um, I'll bring it up to there, do it properly. There we go, do him up. Bring that middle strand down. Clipped my uh, big boa in facing the next anchor because I'm pro, trying to be pro at least. <laughs> Tighten that up, same for that one. Do a clovich, great. Get the twists out because I want it to look as good as possible because I'm on YouTube, aren't I? Uh, right, there we go. Get him adjusted if needs be. By luck, that's just about right. Shout down to a mate that, uh, you know, I can shout safe now, can't I? Great. Get the belay plate loaded. It's in, spinning round so he's the right way, Load, you know, taking the slack and all that jazz, same as always, and clip him in. So this is what people, including me, tell sort of relative novices how to, how to do it. But why? Okay, you'll hear a few answers as to why, some of which I agree with, some I think are just irrelevant, to be honest. Point number one, by clipping into the rope loop, you've got some shock absorption going on. Now I do not really buy that one to be honest. Belay loop, static. Rope loop, dynamic. But how much is there? That times two obviously. Okay, yeah, it's dynamic, it stretches, but how much is that gonna stretch? A lot less than that stretching. Okay, well maybe I'm on a sling belay and there's not much rope involved. Okay, a lot less than that stretching down to my climber. So that one, don't buy it. Uh, the, the knot tightens up and gives a bit of shock absorption as, as that all finishes cinching up. Obviously we've done a neat knot to start with, but yeah, that's the last bit of tightening, that's some shock absorption there. Okay, yeah, how much? Uh, I don't know, that much maybe? As much as this stretching? As much as that stretching? No, I just don't think that it's an, a relevant amount to us. Okay, by the letter of you know what people say, it stretches a bit, yes it does. Does it stretch by an amount that I care about? No, I don't think that's of any use to us particularly, right? Another reason, when your mate falls off, because all that stretches, it puts less impact onto the anchors than if I was clipped into the belay loop. Well, let's swap that over for a second. Obviously, this would not be mid-climb. This is before the climb. Okay, so this time, I'm sort of dangling on these, aren't I? I'm going to be sort of sat down and all that kind of thing. When the mate falls off, Where's the weight going first? It's going onto my harness, which I count as me, right? So I'm probably braced a bit and stuff, yeah, because I am when I'm belayed. So actually the weight's going onto me first, and then the anchors. So I think actually, if you want to absorb some shock from your anchors because you've decided they're not that great, I would clip it into my belay loop and I'd brace myself. So I'm doing as much bracing as possible and then the anchors come into play, all in like a split second obviously, but they're backing me up, if that makes sense. Now I must say that in a lot of years of trad climbing, I've never felt the need to protect my anchors, right? I've always been able to build a belay that I'm happy enough to just go off the rope loop. I couldn't tell you the last time I belayed off the rope loop in this instance, probably before I knew any different basically. So I don't really buy that one of clipping into here puts less force onto the anchors personally, okay? Now, I've protected the anchors by clipping into my belay loop, but what actually happens when my mate falls off is it pulls on me and it's really flipping uncomfortable because it pulls your harness and everything. Could it cause me to twist a bit? Well, yeah, if I'm, if I'm like this, it, I'll spin around that way, won't I? So, Will it cause a bit of twisting, perhaps? So a novice belay who hasn't got it completely ingrained to keep hold of that brake strand, could it affect them? Maybe, right? I'm, I'm sort of clutching at straws for a reason there, um, but maybe it'll twist them a bit, I don't know. So what's the reason for clipping into this rope loop then? For me, right, 
it is simple. It's all about comfort. When my mate falls off and all the weight goes onto this rope loop, yeah, it still pulls me around side to side, but actually I can move around just a little bit. I'm not gonna be doing flipping disco dancing on the belay ledge or anything like that. I wouldn't do that either in normal life, but I think it's a bit more comfortable for you. The final point that you'll hear people saying is, oh, it's much easier to escape the system if the belay plate is on the rope loop. Yeah, kind of, right? The process for escaping the system from, from here makes no difference, right? It changes not at all whether the belay plate is clipped into the rope loop or the belay loop. Absolutely no difference. The difference is comfort again. It's as simple as that in my mind. If it's pulling on your harness, you just don't have any sort of wiggling around sort of potential. It's much harder to tie everything off and you know be cramped up and everything. By having it on there, it's a more comfortable affair and you'll just, you know, it'll be a bit nicer to do should you ever have to do it. So why do people like me always bang on about doing it on here then, even when we're belaying our mate up from the bottom? It, for me, it's just to form a habit. If you get into the habit of putting it onto your rope loop when you're down there, belaying your mate up, and then you do the same from there, it just becomes normal. And I think the vast majority of the time, it is better to go onto the rope loop. But like I say, for me, it's not about protecting anchors or anything like that. It's looking after number one, me. I want to be as comfortable as possible. And I do kind of, uh, I'm not going to say I do hard routes because there's plenty of people climbing a lot harder than me, but they're often hard for me and my mates, so people do fall off. And I do have to hold them, right? So there you go, that's it. How could we make it even more comfortable? Uh, we're probably, you know, setting up a sling and doing a direct belay, but, you know, then that's a bit of a different thing. Right, well, we'll get down that rabbit hole for now. I hope that's cleared up why I think it's a good idea to go into the rope loop. I'd love to hear your comments. You might well disagree. Brilliant. You know, so tell me why you disagree and I'd, I'd love to hear it from you. Um, I'm not going to cause any arguments or anything, but I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, yeah, fire away with any questions and all that lot as well. Love to hear the questions. I always do. You know the score about liking it, clicking the subscribe button, finding us on Insta, finding us on Facebook, hashtag uh, you know Sling Mountain uh, at us at JB Mountain Skills on Insta and all that. Uh, and I'll share what I can and all that kind of jazz. Thanks very much for watching. More videos coming up very soon.